it's going to resist digestive acids. Perhaps it's going to resist antibiotics. So if you only got one to two layers of peptidoglycan, you only have the light control Sphinx. Gram negative is light control Sphinx. Gram positive, this is firm control. What do they call it? Do they call it firm control? That's really a lot of elastic in that one. So this one has a lot of peptidoglycan, but that's all it is. That's its sole protection. This doesn't have much peptidoglycan, so it also has the outer membrane to help. And the benefit of the outer membrane is that it will resist digestive acids and so antibiotics. So that goes with the thick wall? Because you have it. This, yeah, this is, I should have written this in red, sorry. Okay, so that doesn't go with that. That's over okay. there, yeah. Okay. By the way, there is a space that gram-negative bacteria have between their um, cell wall and the inside of the cell that protects them, and it's called a periplasmic space. So gram-negative bacteria also have a periplasmic space. And you might see a question about that, so read that in the book. Only gram-negative pattern. This space also helps protect them, not only from their own toxins, but from any of these other toxins. It's a protective space between the cell wall and the um, plasma membrane. and gram-negative bacteria. Over on this side, gram-positive bacteria have tecoic and lipotecoic acids that the gram-negatives don't have. So here's something unique to gram-negative, and here's something unique to gram-positive. Right. Now, uh, gram-positive bacteria are thick-walled, homogeneous. They're going to turn purple from the primary stain, they retain the primary stain throughout the staining process. The primary stain is crystal violet. And they excrete exotoxins. So take your little plus sign and tip it over. And if you tip it over, you get an X, right? And that's how you remember. And P for purple, P for positive. So that's how you remember. Gram negative, endotoxin, red. Then you got gram positive. P for purple, P for positive. Take your plus sign, tip it over, you got an X, exotoxin. Okay? All right. Exotoxins are excreted wastes. They're excreted while the cells are alive. And because it's metabolic waste, they're proteinaceous. They're protein. Your body will see a foreign protein. Your body will recognize that protein. I, that's not one of my proteins. I didn't make that. And the immune system will go after it. So this can elicit, or trigger, we'll just use that word, triggers a specific immune response. The protein. Yes. And in fact, these are neurotoxins in most cases. Really dangerous. and fast acting and going to kill you before your immune system gets a chance to boot up. However, since it triggers a specific immune response, we can make a vaccine.
and anti-fossil. Your symptoms are going to be neurological symptoms. You got tetanus. Your nervous system is going to lock up. Same thing with botulism. It's a neurotoxin. It's going to shut off your respiratory center in your brain. You're going to asphyxiate. If you get botulism, you're going to die. So they keep you alive artificially on a respirator. Administer antibiotic and antitoxin, and then eventually we'll take you off the respirator once your nervous system has a chance to repair the damage that's done to it, if it can. Brand positive exotoxins, Clostridium, Botulinum. Tetanide. Read that chapter in your book, Gram Positive Pathogen. I have to do acid fast, but let me just write a note for dying to tell the story. about the difference between gram-negative and gram-positive. And green and pink now. Okay. okay. Sometimes you're staining bacteria and you're expecting them to come out either gram-negative, which indicates they have this kind of a wall. They come out pale red. Because their wall is so thin, it can't hold a lot of red. So they'll come out red because the counter stain saponin is red, but it's going to be pale red. So don't expect bright red, expect pale red. Some books will call it pink. It's not pink, it's pale red. Okay? So, but some books will call it pink. Or you're expecting it to come out gram positive. It's a thick wall, crystal violet, purple is the darkest color. It's really gonna be easy to see gram-positive bacteria. They got a nice, dark, purple, thick, purple wall, right? You're staining and staining and you're not getting a good result and you can't, why is my gram stain, gram stain coming out? Sometimes when you stain bacteria that are too old, your gram stain won't come out right. The cells are starting to break down because they're old and dying and they might actually come out red because the wall can't hold the dye anymore because it's just falling apart. Some bacteria are what we call gram variable, which means they don't really do a good gram stain or you just can't get a reliable result. So gram variable, it might not come out purple or red because that species of bacteria, for whatever reason, just won't take a gram stain. Treponema pallidum, you can't gram stain it. Most of the spirochetes are kind of hard to gram stain and they're kind of hard to culture anyway. And when you heat fix them, they straighten out. <laughs> you don't know they were spirochetes. Better to work with spirochetes in a um, negative stain or in a live wet mouth. Um, gram variable, the bacteria might be old, you don't get a proper result or they don't just don't stain good. And another thing that can happen is they might actually be acid fast bacteria. So you're not going to get a good gram stain result. Now we're going to talk about acid fast. Acid fast bacterial wall is a thick wall, like a gram positive wall, six to eight layers of peptidoglycan. But in addition to that, it has mycolic acid waxes embedded in it. So, It 
it's a thick wall. That's why it's in division two. Has to touch that. Right? It has a thick wall with mycolic acid waxes in the wall. Mycolic acid is the name of a wax. Waxes are acids. Did you know that? You'll get a test question or a quiz question, and your choices, A, B, C, D, E, are going to be mycolic acid, tannic acid, stuff like that. So, just so you know. So mycolic acid is in the wall. And these waxes are hard for antibiotics to penetrate. So it makes the bacteria really tough. There aren't many bacteria that have an acid fast wall. Mycobacterium has an acid fast wall. And the section is called Mycobacteria, right? What about mycoplasmas? Remember the ones with 